they robbed her everything. They robbed her the life, the good life that she was supposed to be living. Uh, the milestones of Teto will not be the same as the milestones of any other child who never contracted listerosis, who never had the convulsions, who never had the seizures. So, yeah. I, I really owe her an apology because I'm the one who ate this uh, contaminated food. And that's the results of what I ate. And to this date, we don't even eat anything from Thai government. Not even jungle oats, not even rice, the artistic rice, not even baked beans, not even, you need them. We don't eat them in this house. Even my family, my immediate family, they don't buy them. We in solidarity in this. The Department of Health confirmed 748 cases of listeriosis and says that the disease claimed 67 lives so far. The World Health Organization recently said that outbreak in South Africa is the worst recorded in human history. We advise members of the public to avoid all processed meat products that are sold as ready to eat. Tiger Brands CEO Lawrence McDougall says there is no evidence that his company's products led to any deaths from listeria. So today on the 5th of March, you take no responsibility for those there, who died. There is no direct link with the deaths to our products. We understand that about 200 people have succumbed to this deadly disease. The evidence is overwhelming to show that it was linked to the Poliquane factory, where, which enterprise owns and where they manufacture the poison product. My brother Dumisani is married to Ellie. So we've been very close. I mean, Ellie is my sister in love. <laughs> we've been very close and uh, always doing things together. Um, you know, uh, Ellie and I share her children. Um, they have a beautiful two sons, Simpiwe and Sakumzi, and older brother uh, called Nechi, who's in the US, and an older sister who is in Tabiseng. And so Ellie has just always been one of those giving mothers, giving sisters, and she really found a lot of time to spend with us as a family and put a lot of value into family. In fact, I always laugh because she used to say, Lens, we've got to have Sunday lunch. It's such an important thing. And we'd say, yeah, but we're busy. And now we're here for Sunday lunch every Sunday. I'm like, okay, you won on that one. <laughs> so we met in Tanzania. She's Tanzanian uh, by birth and origin. Um, married uh, here in South Africa somewhere around 2006, 7 uh, and we settled this end. She, as I said, was practicing in medicine, uh, working as a GP in her home country, was in the process of converting to work as a medical doctor here, but also involved in the medical practitioner field, working for a series of NGOs, but also uh, was had started her own business, a medical concierge business, which at the time was uh, growing quite uh, uh, significantly. She uh, had traveled on a business trip uh, to Bloemfontein and Cape Town in the week prior to the uh, events uh, uh, starting uh, and came back and complained of had, having consumed what we thought or understood to be a cob salad. She was very health conscious and ate a lot of salads and health uh, and health foods which we believe may have contained uh, cold 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 meats at the time that she took ill we went uh, and when they had diagnosed it to be listeria uh, meningitis the doctors confirmed that it uh, listeria meningitis, meningitis which is a bacterial infection which starts in the stomach 
would have come from uh, consuming food uh, uh, products, especially vegetable salads and 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 the like. So that's how the association was was made. Uh, but I was actually reminded by my sister, we as we were talking about it today, the ST6 uh, strain of this particular meningitis, uh, Listeria meningitis, meningitis, was picked up in the testing that was done at uh, uh, the medical uh, facility that she was she was in. When you grow up, what do you want to be when you grow up? Doctor. Why, doctor. Why do you want to be a doctor? I want to help people to get feel better. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that good and they can stay home and drink and eat, drink, eat some medicine and some water. While I was pregnant, I used to crave this tiger brand stuff. I loved them to be. I used to eat polony, Viennese, Russians, ham, you name them. I craved them so much and because I was staying next to Tiger Brand, so I could just drive in the morning and buy whatever I, I wanted to eat at that time. And not knowing that it's contaminated. I gave birth to Teto on the 22nd of December, 2017. We were very happy in the family. The, my other two kids were very excited and yeah, they couldn't wait to see their little sister. And uh, unfortunately, after 18 days, she fell sick. I took her to the GP and later on took her to the pediatrician. So at the pediatrician, they said the size of her head, it's, it's, it's unusual for kids of her age. So we went to, or the pediatrician advised us to go to the hospital where they did the scan. And uh, the scan, we, at the scan we found that the, there is water accumulating in the brain. So that's when the painful journey started. Mm -hmm. She started going to the operations. And until now, we are still struggling with the pain that she encountered when she was 18 days old mm -hmm. up to date. Mm -hmm. The pain that we are still going through now is so severe. The wound does not heal. It's like putting a salt on, a, on an open wound. We don't heal. We, we owed the hospital a lot of money. We owed um, um, the banks. Even now we're still owing the banks and we had to uh, do those debts, and we paying those debts with another debt, so that for survival. In your turtle's condition, it's it's life threatening. When she's sick, you cannot just say, "I'll go to the doctor next month," or some other time. You just have to prioritize her mm -hmm. and take her to the to the hospital. To this day, she's having six operations of. Uh, six brain operations. They were inserting the VP shunt. The pain's on back. It's so deep. I'm not coping, we're not coping the family. That's why we had to sell the house. We had to sell everything that we had. And now we are living very far from the CBD. Remember we were staying in the suburban areas around Bologna and now we had to relocate to this place. Uh, so that we can cover the the expenses of her operations and my operations as well. Um, I had to do two hip replacements, and yeah, the journey is is not nice. Mm -hmm. Cannot wish that to anyone. Uh, my mother that was my best friend. She was you. Know, she was everything. My mother used to get a disability grant due to her heart problems. And then she used to sell, because we are five, she used to sell a bunny house, sweets and snacks. That's how she was able to feed us. Mm -hmm. I knew that she had a heart problem, but this time it was different. She started having a diarrhea. She messes up herself and I have to clean it. Seeing her, it was very, very hard. 
she could have the data from morning until mm. tomorrow. Mm. And then she starts vomiting, vomit, she lost appetite, so I thought it was heart problem. And she was changing in also in skin, mm. in skin color. Mm. So it took about three days uh, having that diarrhea and she was vomiting a lot. She had nausea, she couldn't eat. Mm. And then she was taken to clinic, then they trans they, they, they transferred to Bar, then she was admitted there. Mm. And it was, she was admitted on Monday, then she was she passed on Friday. I never thought she would pass on because I thought it was diarrhea. Mm. Yes. Mm. My mother used to love a small fears. She used to love them a lot. We were like we and she she never bought any brand. She used to buy quality ones because she sell to her clients. My mother passed on 2017 and I was around 30 to 31 years if I correct. And she left me with uh, Zanele. She was in grade seven, if I'm not mistaken. And my mother, the last one, she was in grade five. And depending on her disability count, it, it has to be stopped. And I had to be I had to learn to survive for them to go to school. I did what I did again and then even now we are sparkling very well stone with my mother. Sometimes I wish she could just wake up just for once because it's like I learned. Uh, Tanga Brand is not compassionate. They don't have any mercy towards anyone who has contracted listerosis. Mm. They just live in their lives like nothing happened and we had to do everything on our own. Tanga Brand has been reached out to us since our mother passed away till today. It seems like they don't care about the, sip, the children she left. If they could reach out, if they have to reach out, um, reach out to us and be able to help. It's not like you want um, mine or something, but share, see how we, we, we are struggling, losing our mother, because I feel as if this is their negligence. Here is someone who had a future ahead of her, a professional, as I've explained, her businesses that were, you know, just seemed to be gaining traction, uh, her profession, which she was very eagerly looking to uh, to uh, continue to participate in, and would have you know uh, contributed to the well-being of the family materially, uh, uh, you know, psychologically, psychologically through uh, looking after the kids and myself, I guess you know, uh, myself also in terms of being constrained in what one could have done uh, or or could do at the time we had plans. Uh, to you know, really extend and and and, and career-wise, uh, you know, do quite a bit, which involved probably going out of the country. That all had to come to a bit of a halt, you know, as we uh, now uh, contended with the the focus being to you know to look after. And I think the wider family. I mean, people have had to come and uh, uh, visit and look at. It. I'm talking about family members on her side from great distances. You know, uh, have had to. Uh, also go through a lot, you know, in terms of the trauma and psychological effects that uh, that that this that this has brought on. Tiger Brands agreed to certification of the class action back in uh, 2018, uh, which is and since then um, there have not been any other agreements uh, outside of that between us and Tiger Brands. The primary delay by Tiger Brands of this case was them seeking to subpoena each and every laboratory in the country and just about any other meat producing company in the country because they wanted to make sure that there was no other source of the listeria outbreak during the outbreak period 
except for them. Um, that case went into the High Court where they were successful, but in the Supreme Court of Appeal, that decision was overturned to say, and the Tiger Brands was told that it is not reasonable for them to expect um, every lab to produce their lab results and every meat processing company to give them their results during the outbreak period, especially because our case is based on our clients consuming Tiger Brands products. So trying to bring anyone else into the litigation does not make any sense. I am hoping that uh, everyone who has been infected or affected be compensated accordingly because some people lost their loved ones, some people lo lost their kids and it's painful. And we, I am currently living with the child that is struggling with the right disease called hydrocephalus, the swelling of the brain. So you just sleep today and tomorrow you wake up, the head is swollen and there is nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. You have to go to the hospital, to the, to the theater and operation. That's the only way. Mm -hmm. And it's costly. It's hard to speculate as to why Tiger Brands is delaying and you can think of a number of reasons. For example, the litigation is handled by their insurers and not Tiger Brands directly. An insurer has a vested interest in making sure that whatever money is earmarked for the settlement gains as much interest as possible before that money is paid over to the victims. That could be one reason that explains why the matter has not settled yet and why it's been delayed. And the fact that this case has dragged on for seven, eight years without settlement is egregious. Uh, if you look at the profile of the victims of this outbreak, it's mothers who are pregnant who make up about 50% of the victims, which is about 500 or so people. Uh, it's people that were immunocompromised. Um, it's babies that contracted listeriosis in utero from their mothers who are continuing to suffer the consequence of, um, of, of the infection with listeriosis. And if there's no intervention, immediately their conditions are gonna worsen. So couple this with the fact that there is overwhelming evidence that Tiger Brands is responsible for this outbreak, uh, it makes absolutely no sense that they have not settled the case yet.